All right, welcome back class. Um, so in this rather short uh, part C of the lecture, we're gonna apply what we've learned to a relatively simple problem, which doesn't require too much machinery, uh, which is uh, local stability analysis. <clears throat> now, I think if you've learned anything from part B of this lecture, which is, it is that when choosing your representation of the set, um, balls are best. So uh, if you can possibly uh, choose a, a unit ball as the set over which you'd like to optimize, or some variation like an ellipsoid, then I would go with that. Fortunately, uh, balls, for at least do computing domains of attraction and finding local Lyapunov functions, work pretty good. Um, in fact, uh, you can even prove, and that's a subject of research, uh, that uh, you only need to consider uh, optimization over balls. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> so let's consider the, uh, the problem of Lyapunov stability on a local set. So say, for example, uh, this is our local set. We want to find a Lyapunov function on this, uh, this set S here. So we can define this set, uh, actually this is a hyper-rectangle, so uh, we could do this uh, with some p's like uh, with the uh, um, uh, a minus x, uh, x minus b, greater than or equal to zero, and then for y we could have, um, a, say, a2 minus y, uh, y minus b2, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> this uh, is not a great representation, though, because each of these is not actually p-compact, uh, because uh, e this representation is looks like that, and this representation looks like that, right? Well, actually, if, if this got my coordinates reversed, but this one looks like that, and that one looks like that. So, okay. So there are the, each of those uh, functions is not themselves p-compact. So actually, this uh, hyper-rectangle is a little bit tricky to, to do uh, optimization on. So I would suggest getting to balls where we just consider x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to b, right? That would be better. But anyway, in any case, uh, assume you've chosen your domain, right, that you want to search. Right, or x, I guess I'm using x now for some reason. Um, <clears throat> so if we apply the uh, Putnar's positive Stellan sets to that, well, what are we looking for? We're looking for a v of x, which is greater than or equal to zero for all x in the set. And we want v dot, which is nabla v transpose f of x, which is a polynomial as well, to be less than or equal to zero. And we'll just put a negative sign in front of that so it's greater than or equal to zero for all x in that set. So, of course, if you can find such a Lyapunov function, um, any sublevel set of that Lyapunov function, which is contained in your set, is a domain of attraction of the origin. So, for example, this is like the largest sublevel set which is contained in our uh, set, and so this is the domain of attraction. These others uh, are not provable domains of attraction because they leave the set, and so we don't know what happens out here. It's no man's land. Here there'd be dragons or something like that. So not a, not a valid set. Um, <clears throat> anyway, but the, the important point is, of course, how do you enforce these types of conditions, right? So again, this is a straightforward application of Putin's positive selling sets. Uh, we're searching for a V. That's, of course, our... A variable, v, um, and we want it to be positive, right? Uh, so we add a SOS variable, but we only want it to be positive on the set, so we can add the SOS multipliers, right? So we can bring those PIs down into our positivity representation. Each of them gets an SOS multiplier. Those are variables. And then we have a strict positivity term, so actually we want this to be greater than epsilon x squared, uh, that's, that we could move that over here, right? 
and uh, that's uh, but we, we we didn't we we left it on the right hand side uh, so essentially what we're doing is then proving v of x minus that is greater than or equal to zero so Again, this is, uh, this is what we get from the PSATs. Obviously, it's a sufficient condition for V to be positive in the ball. Likewise, for the derivative, we take the negative of the derivative because we want it to be positive. It's equal to another SOS variable, T, SOS variable, some more SOS variables, other Ts. And uh, we want the derivative to be strictly greater than or equal to zero as well. So another epsilon x squared here. And uh, again, we could move that over there to make it sort of fit in our PSATs framework, but I've skipped that step. And so if uh, v dot is uh, negative v dot is equal to something which is positive plus some term which it's greater than, clearly then we have uh, v dot is less than or equal to just multiply through by a negative sign. We switch our inequalities less than or equal to negative epsilon x squared. So this is a Lyapunov function which is decreasing everywhere in our set. So we can go a step further and get the domain of attraction and we have epsilon so we have exponential stability. We can get a domain of attraction or an estimate of the domain of attraction by finding the lar any sublevel set really but of course we're interested in the largest one any sublevel set of v which is contained in that set. Now, how to find that sublevel, that largest sublevel set, is itself an optimization problem uh, using bisection on the on the sublevel set, and we'll talk about that in a second. So then, the rest of this uh, lecture is just how to enforce these types of conditions. So basically, first of all, right, um, we consider the Van der Poel oscillator, right. Uh, the first question we ask is, what should we choose for our PIs, right? Well, this is a tricky question because we're, it sort of assumes we already know what our domain of attraction should look like, right? So, for example, if we know that the domain of attraction looks like this, well, then a good ball is something which is sort of... Uh, representation-ish of the domain of attraction, which would be a ball of radius, I don't know, what does that look like? Does it look like r equals three or something like that. And then, uh, so we should choose, a, we'll choose a ball, right, x squared plus y squared. Um, actually, there's a equals r minus x squared plus y squared, which is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, on the unit ball. So it's an exact representation of the ball, not the unit ball of radius, square root of r. So we can add an r squared there if we like. Then it's ball of radius r. Right. Um, so again, right, uh, we don't really know what the, how, where to, what, what set to enforce our uh, derivative inequality on. Um, fortunately, we, it, it doesn't require that much knowledge. So we can just Increase, uh, start with a, a ball which isn't too big, maybe radius one, and we find a level, a uh, Lyapunov function, and then we can push our luck by increasing the radius a little bit, radius two maybe, increase our luck a little bit, choose radius four, then it's in, infeasible, and so we reduce to radius three, we find that's feasible, and we just keep bisecting on that radius until we can no longer find a Lyapunov function on that ball. So we just uh, bisect on the radius of the ball until we can no longer find a valid Lyapunov function on that ball. So for example, uh, for degree four, it looks like, if I erase all my scribbles here. So it looks like on degree two, we were only able to find a, a, a Lyapunov function on a ball of that size. Degree four, we were able to find a ball of that size. Degree six, we were able to a ball, find a ball of that size. And degree eight, we were find, able to find a ball of that size. Notice that just because the, uh, the, so we don't, so just because uh, the, the system is unstable in some regions of the ball does not necessarily mean that we can't find a valid Lyapunov function there because in this region of the uh, of the domain, v may be 
decreasing, we may enforce V to be decreasing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is a stable point. So for example, the sublevel sets, right, of V may leave the ball, and that's a, that, that, so not, that point is not necessarily stable just because we can find a valid Lyapunov function in that point. It's only the level set which is contained in the ball on which we are able to do, prove a domain of attraction or prove stability. Right. So don't worry about the, uh, making sure that uh, all points in your ball are stable. Just find the largest ball on which you can find a Lyapunov function which proves stability of some set. Right. And then once you've found such a Lyapunov function, uh, the secondary task is to find this largest sublevel set of that Lyapunov function, which is contained in the ball, which is a bit of an easier task, but also requires an SOS program. So this requires an SOS program, as does this. So what are these SOS programs? Right. So uh, here we're implementing an SOS tools just because that makes life easier. Um, and uh, here we're finding, a, we're analyzing the uh, van der Poel oscillator. These are the dynamics of van der Poel oscillator. That's not the dynamics. This is the dynamics of the van der Poel oscillator. In reverse time, of course. And here is our ball of radius, well, actually square root of r. If I put squ r square there, I could have done that as well. Now, we're not searching for r because... Uh, ultimately, if you put a variable into the domain you're searching over, it becomes bilinear. So this is not a variable in your optimization problem. It's given. So again, right, you, you can't search over R directly, but you can, be, it's monotonic in R, so you can use bisection to search for the largest such R, which contains a Lyapunov function. Right. So we bisect on this. Right. So there's a, there's a setup. We've got a, this is our X, which is the ball of radius square root of R. Here's our vector field. This is F1, F2. And uh, so now we've uh, declared our SOS program. Uh, here we have two SOS variables. The first one, of course, is the Lyapunov function itself. Right? So this makes V in SOS, sum of squares. And uh, of course, SOS itself is not strictly positive, right? It doesn't, uh, a valid uh, solution to this would be V equals zero, but we don't want V equals zero. So we're going to add a little extra term to our V to make it strictly positive. And so we'll add this point epsilon 0001 uh, times x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, right? So that makes v greater than or equal to 0 0.001 uh, x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, right? Notice it's not squared as we had in the previous one, so uh, keep that in mind. And then, of course, we have that constraint here, uh, equality constraint, v of 0 equals 0. So substituting in for x, y at 0, 0 and making that equal to 0. So this is all equal to zero. We then form the derivative, the nabla v. Uh, we then add, formulate the derivative here, uh, nabla v transpose f, v dot, put a negative sign up on in front of it. And we want, of course, this to be greater than or equal to zero. So, but we only want it to be greater than or equal to zero on that ball. So we set it equal to a SOS variable, s naught plus another SOS variable, S2, if we like, G, where G is defining our unit ball. That's radius square root of R. Now, when we implement this, right, uh, we use the SOS unique because that adds this term here, right? So this, uh, this term comes from SOS unique. So basically, what this does is it makes negative v dot minus sg, s times g, equal to some sum of squares variable s naught, right? That's what this does. So then if we move this term over to the right-hand side, we get negative v dot equals s naught plus s times g, s1. 
where of course now we have to actually declare that SOS variable explicitly, and that's what we've done here. That declares that variable here. So the SOS var, right, requires that S be an SOS variable. And so now we've got our optimization problem set up. So we've got two SOS variables. One is implicit. We didn't actually just declare it, but it's declared implicitly in the optimization problem using this init. Uh, so then we're, uh, we're pretty much done. We didn't require here strict negativity of the derivative, so uh, it's not going to get exponentially stable, just Lyapunov stable. We solve the problem, and we get our solution v of n, which is a Lyapunov function. So now we've uh, found a unit ball, and we found a vn, was such that vn derivative is less than zero and vn is positive on that ball, but not outside of it. So remember the oscillator looks something like that, I'm poor illustration. Uh, and so now the, uh, this oscillator is uh, going to, the ball is going to have, um, uh, it's going to be contained in that uh, it, it's limit points, so it's not, it, it doesn't entirely contain the domain of attraction. Because if it did contain the domain of attraction, uh, we would be able to find a Lyapunov function, which proves that the domain of something bigger than domain of attraction is the domain of attraction, which is of course impossible. So uh, in this case, we uh, we found we're using a degree four Lyapunov function, and our multiplier is degree two. And that's because g itself is degree 2, so when we multiply those two together, we get degree 4. And so we're just matching the degrees here a little bit. That's all we're doing. We could, uh, we could increase the degree of, of, of the SOS variable to in, improve the accuracy if we liked. So then armed with our uh, solution from the previous uh, SOS problem from slide 27 or 26, uh, the next task is to find the largest uh, sublevel set of that Lyapunov function, which is contained in that ball of radius. I believe it was uh, 2r, right? Um, or 2.8, or square root of 2.8. Right. So here's r, uh, that's uh, r there is uh, two point, square root of 2.8, right? And so what, what do we need to do here? Well, what we need to do is sh find the largest gamma such that for every point in Vn less than or equal to gamma, right, uh, for all x in the set, Vn less than or equal to gamma, uh, the size of that x is less than the radius. So x in all of radius square root of r. So to do that, right, we will show that, or we will test the condition that uh, the ball is, so that the ball is satisfied for every point in the set. So actually what we're testing is that r minus x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to zero for all x in that sublevel set. So this actually is the optimization problem. So here's the F that we want to in, ensure. And this is the P. This is the, the, the set on which we're, we're proving, right, S. So in this case, P is uh, equal to gamma minus Vn. So remember, G, Vn is given uh, gamma. We would like to make it a variable because we'd like to maximize it. But of course, the problem is it, the p's multiply our SOS variables. So we can't include variables in the description of the, re, of the set itself, right? That creates bilinearity. So actually what we've got to do is bisect on this gamma until we can no longer prove that this sublevel set is contained in the ball. So we're going to bisect on this uh, gamma. So, uh, so for given gamma, uh, the, the setup is as follows, right? Uh, this is the thing, this is our, our P. There's only one of them, right? That's our P, gamma minus Vn, Vn is given, G 
gamma is given. Uh, again, representation, no variables can appear in it. Right? Uh, R is given, uh, G is given again, right? That's the function. We could include R, but of course we've already determined what R is, so that's not really an option. Uh, we declare our SOS program. Uh, we declare an SOS variable, so the multiplier of P, right? Um, Z2 there. So our monomials are up to degree two. So when we declare this SOS variable, so actually our variable is S here, the multiplier, this actually has degree four. You remember that when you use SOS var, that has uh, doubles the degree of the monomials in Z2. Z2. Right, so Z2 is degree two, then S is degree four. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is, right, prove that uh, this ball, right, R minus X squared plus Y squared, right, equals an SOS variable plus using our PSATs results, S naught, let's call it S1 uh, times uh, PI, where that's our PI here. So again, same step as before. Uh, we have, this is our G. So we have G, we move this to the other side and the, adding the SOS unique makes this equal to an SOS variable. So this makes G minus S times VG equal to another SOS variable, S naught, right? Which is implicit. So variable, variable, uh, variable, um, and that's, those are all our variables in this case. So again, right, uh, if we, uh, we can find such a, a, a representation, find such an SOS variable, this proves that the ball or the representation of the ball is positive everywhere on that sublevel set, and therefore the sublevel set is contained in that ball. Uh, so if we pr can prove feasibility, we just increase the size of the ball until we can no longer prove, uh, or, sorry, we increase the size of the, the, the gamma for the sublevel set until that sublevel set is no longer contained in the ball. So if, say, if, say, for example, this is our ball, which of course it's, it's not for degree four or whatever we're using here. Um, but uh, uh, at some point, right, as we increase the sublevel sets, that sublevel set this one just barely makes it, uh, the next sublevel set will be infeasible because, right, there's a point in that sublevel set which is not contained in the ball. It has magnitude greater than r, square root of r. And so the, the, this problem will become infeasible and that's when our bisection stops, right? So we, when we get to that maximum point. So uh, this is uh, just a slide in illustrating uh, those principles, right, uh, that we talked about on the previous two slides, uh, or I wrote down. Uh, so to make v dot less than uh, zero on um, the set x such that g of x greater than or equal to zero, we apply the PSATs and we get, uh, right, equal to an SOS variable. Right, we move that to the other side, plus g s of x. And this is a variable as well. Um, so I guess, I guess this is, uh, this is rep repetitive from what we went over on the previous slide. So this is the, the, this is the first problem, one. And this is, uh, this is the, the, uh, the second problem, where we're finding the largest sublevel set. Right. And here again, <clears throat> we're proving that um, r minus x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to zero for all x such that gamma minus v of x is greater than or equal to zero. And we just apply the PSATs to that, and this, these are the conditions that we get. So we just uh, grow up our gamma until it no longer is feasible, and then we have a domain of attraction of the origin. Yep. And actually, this works very well. In fact, you can actually prove uh, that as you get closer to the region of feasibility, it forces the Apanoff function to uh, match the actual domain of attraction arbitrarily well. And there's 
various results on that in, in, in the literature. So finally, to conclude this lecture, um, we talked, actually, I don't know why, but we, we, I include a slide uh, which is global stability analysis, which of course has no application to local stability analysis and doesn't use the PSATs at all. But I just thought I'd, uh, I'd throw it out there uh, for some extra SOS problems. Um, because I introduced this, this, this set of dynamics earlier, so I thought I'd do something with it. Uh, so basically, these are the uh, Euler equations for uh, satellite dynamics. Well, we showed uh, in the previous lecture that, uh, uh, that they are actually neutrally stable. Um, in this case, we're actually adding a controller to these, uh, to the, the, these dynamics, so a, a proportional controller. So that gets plugged in here. And we're going to prove that with that controller, these dynamics are exponentially stable. Uh, globally, actually, so not locally. So I apologize for the lack of, of locality here, uh, but uh, here it is. Uh, here's uh, the vector field, right? Here's the uh, nominal dynamics. Here's our controllers, U1, U2, and U3. Uh, they're defined here using the simple proportional control law, K1, K2, and K3 where we've defined actually the gains here to be one in each case. Uh, we declare our SOS program. We declare a Lyapunov function. Here it's going to be degree four Lyapunov function. Um, and uh, we actually include only the monomials of degree one to two. So actually we don't need this constraint down here. Uh, so this is degree four. Uh, we add a term to it to make it strictly positive. Etc. Um, <clears throat> we we so we constrain it to be v of zero equal to zero. We find the gradient. Well, not not the transpose of the gradient. We uh, couldn't we we add the uh, the gradient here, right? So we want v dot to be less than in this case four uh, v negative 4v. And so we uh, move the derivative to the right-hand side to get negative v dot uh, minus 4v greater than or equal to 0, which of course in our SOS language means equal to an SOS variable, which is implicit. It's not explicit. It's implicit in this unique. So there we go. This is a v dot here, or negative v dot minus 4v. And uh, the, we, we include 4v here to make it exponentially stable. So our decay rate in this case will be uh, 4. Uh, we've used 4 just because it was the largest value we could find. Um, we use, again, bisection on that value of 4. It gives us our decay rate. Uh, until it's no longer feasible. <clears throat> We then, uh, so given that four, we solve the problem, and if we like, we can get the Lyapunov function, which proves that exponential stability uh, with, with decay rate four. Uh, finally, another, a, a last example um, of stability analysis. Again, it's a globally stabilizing controller in this case. Here's our dynamics. It's just an illustration of the problem. We only have one input in this case. Um, and the input is given specifically uh, here. Uh, <clears throat> so in this case, actually, what we're looking for is a uh, controller, uh, not a, we were not given a controller, we're desired, we're, we want to find a controller. So in this case, uh, we actually make uh, the controller itself a variable. Actually, we have two controls, one, two. Uh, so these are variables. And how do we uh, declare in variables? They don't need to be SOS variables because they don't need to be positive. In fact, we don't want them to be positive always. We want them to be negative and positive, but depending on the value of x. And so we declare them with polyvars to make them not SOS. Um, <clears throat> in this case, 
we the degree of the monomials going into polyvar is the same degree as uh, th those coming out. Right, so these are variables here, just highlighted variables. <clears throat> so these uh, the variables that we get out here are going to be degree three. So uh, monomials, uh, both Z2 and Z4, are degree 3 in this case. Uh, the controller variables depend on Z4, so they're degree 3. Uh, our Lyapunov variable here, where's our Lyapunov variable? Actually, we're, we're using a fixed uh, Lyapunov function, so we're not even searching for uh, that Lyapunov function. <coughs> so why do we need Z2 there? Mm, good question. Uh, so we're using a chosen Lyapunov function. We're not searching for it. Uh, we could search for it, but we've for some reason chosen not to. Um, I'm not sure why. In fact, actually, we're constraining v of zero to be zero here, so I'm not sure uh, that probably a uh, some reason I uh, it must have been a mix up in the code. Um, so let's uh, let's ignore this bit and assume our uh, SOS variable is uses Z2, so it's going to be degree 4, or 6, I mean. Although apparently you only need squares. Uh, then we form V dot, V dot. Uh, now, notice that <clears throat> the F here, right, is, uh, which is in V dot, is a function of our uh, controllers. And this is, of course, why we didn't choose v to be a variable. So my mistake, uh, because the derivative itself, right, uh, depends on um, gradient of v transpose f, which is a function of k. Right. Well, it's actually f of x plus f of x plus a k. Right. So if we made this a variable and this a variable, then we would have a bilinear term. And that's why we chose this uh, function. So uh, let's, let's stick with that. So controller synthesis is bilinear in the, in the controller gains and in the Lyapunov function. And so we can't search for both. So we choose to search over the controllers for a given Lyapunov function. So this controller will work with this Lyapunov function. We chose a relatively simple Lyapunov function. Uh, but uh, then we don't need this constraint here. Uh, we still need to find nabla v, uh, but uh, this one is, uh, is, is not valid. We don't need that. Because uh, by definition of v, v of 0 is 0. Uh, so now we've uh, constructed v dot. We want to make it ne in a, uh, less than or equal to 0, so we add the unique sign to it. Uh, we solve the optimization problem, and it turns out to be feasible. Uh, so we can find an exponentially stabilizing controller, or actually just a, a Lyapunov stabilizing controller. And to recover that controller, we, uh, we use the getsol command, SOS getsol here, uh, to recover our controller gains K1 and K2. So again, right, uh, we include this just uh, to sort of wrap up our uh, nonlinear stability analysis, um, saying, showing that you can do controller synthesis, but you have to fix the Lyapunov function. Right. And don't include this term here. So in the next lecture, uh, we're going to briefly talk about uh, problems which are not Lyapunov function problems, so um, optimization problems per se and robust stability problems. Um, but at this point, we can conclude that Lyapunov stability is probably the most widely used application of sum of squares, and local stability analysis is probably the most common um, application of nonlinear stability analysis for sum of squares, and it requires the PSATs, because global stability problems are relatively rare, although in this case, right, uh, in, in the previous one, we could show we could find globally stabilizing controllers. So when you're finding controllers, uh, globally global stabilization is a little bit easier. But stability analysis and domain of attractions are inherently local problems. So with that, I will conclude this lecture, although not on a great note because I made the mistake in the slides. So I apologize for that. Uh, maybe I'll re-record it at some point, but not today. 
see you all at lecture 17, which will conclude this section on uh, the PSATs and SOS techniques.